Welcome! Time is finally here! Top 100 best JRPGs of all time! Now, I have three things to clarify before you watch this video. Number one, there will be no only in Japan games, even if they were fan translated. Number two, the list will be in random order to avoid conflict between us all and also to avoid predictability. And number three, please remember that above everything else, this is my personal opinion. With that clarified, let's begin! Number 100, Dragon Warrior Probably the most historically important JRPG ever, as it was the beginning of an era where Japanese role-playing games would start thriving overseas. It was a before and after influencing hundreds of titles. It was also the start of one of the most popular RPG franchises of all time. Number 99, Final Fantasy Another classic that can also be considered as the most historically important JRPG, a game that marked the beginning of another very popular and successful franchise, and probably the title that popularized the genre in the entire world. Number 98, The Legend of Dragoon, a very expensive game in terms of production that ironically sold way more in the US than in Japan. Classic fantasy RPG with a unique turn-based battle system, it stands out because of its realism elements and its cinematic approach. Number 97, Rune Factory. It's a role-playing game in the universe of Harvest Rune, a franchise of games now called Story of Seasons. Rune Factory was the first step towards its evolution, with more classic RPG elements, emphasis on its story and farm simulation. Number 96, Tales of Symphonia. The fifth game in the iconic Tales of franchise and the one that most likely popularized the series outside Japan. With its cell shaded art style and its 3D battle mechanics, Symphonia is perhaps one of the most memorable titles in the system. Number 95, Shining Force. One of the earliest strategy RPGs ever created, made to compete with the Fire Emblem series in Japan, Shining Force paved the way as a friendly approach with simple mechanics, light nature story, and an interface that was easier to understand. Number 94, Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. Also known as Shin Megami Tensei 3 or Lucifer's Call in Europe, it was a critically acclaimed RPG and the first of the main Shin Megami Tensei series to be localized. Needless to say, it's also regarded as one of the hardest JRPGs of all time. Number 93, Nier. With a highly dark and twisted story comes this excellent action RPG, a spin-off of the Dragon Guard series that quickly became its own franchise. Outside of Japan, the world got the Gestalt version, offering a playthrough with an older male protagonist trying to save his daughter from a horrible illness. Number 92, Final Fantasy IV. Originally released as Final Fantasy II in the West, this game was the very first in the series with a heavy focus on its narrative and character development. It also took the battle system and gameplay mechanics to a new era of RP gaming. Number 91, Grandia. With a very unique turn-based battle system and its fantasy universe with science fiction elements, Grandia is one of the most memorable RPGs on the PlayStation, all this mainly thanks to its innovation and its charismatic cast of characters. Number 90, Fire Emblem The Blazing Sword. The very first title in the long-running franchise ever to be localized outside Japan, heavy emphasis on its story elements, its perfect battle mechanics, and its three totally different main characters, possibly among the best in the series. Number 89, Dragon's Crown. Action RPG heavily influenced by Dungeons and Dragons in the arcade. Controversial for its beautiful and also grotesque art style. Very addictive with one of the best couch co-op modes and multiplayer experiences ever in a fantasy JRPG. Number 88, Octopath Traveler. Developed by Square Enix and Acquire, it's a modern but classic turn-based RPG with eight different characters to choose from, each with their own story and route. Definitely a love letter to 16-bit JRPGs. Number 87, The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky 1 and 2. A duology of heavily story-driven RPGs from Nihon Falcom's long-running series The Legend of Heroes. There was a third game story-wise, but it acted more as a spin-off. Either way, all three of them are great games, but more specifically the first two. Number 86, Atelier Iris 2. 
Part of a trilogy and definitely the best out of the three, the Assault of Destiny perfected the battle system and gameplay mechanics of its predecessor, focusing more on its adventure and synthesis elements at the same time with two different protagonists. Number 85. Wild Arms A classic turn-based RPG influenced by the Western American setting and style. It also became the start of a new iconic and cult following series that sadly hasn't returned to modern consoles. Number 84. Lufia 2 Rise of the Sinistrals Another turn-based RPG, a prequel to a first game in a defunct series, and the best of them all without a doubt. Lufia 2 had a more compelling plot, improved gameplay mechanics, and a more mature cast of characters. Number 83. Tales of Graces F very long RPG, enormous emphasis on its story and character progression as you start with everyone when they're kids. We see them grow into adults in a beautiful world, a mysterious plot, and an intricate battle system more technical than other Tales of games. Number 82 is 1. The Vanished Omens The godfather of action RPGs and Falcom's first successful game outside Japan, it paved the way for an extremely underrated series with its many different versions, ports, and remakes. Number 81. Persona 2 Two games part of the same story cut into two roots. Eternal Punishment was the only one released outside Japan at first, then Innocent Sin on the PSP over a decade later. Great games with their dark plots and demon summoning abilities as Personas. Number 80. Dot Hack GU Last Recode A compilation of three volumes on the PS2 that were initially one game cut into three parts excellent action RPG with a controversial plot of players controlling a character inside a fictional MMORPG. The Dot .hack series became so iconic that influenced a number of anime series and other games. Number 79. Xenoblade Chronicles An outstanding open-world RPG that revolutionized the industry of JRPGs nowadays. Great focus on story and characters living in a fantasy science fiction universe. One of the best on the system, part of the critically acclaimed Xeno series. Number 78. Suikoden The first of another cult classic, tragically defunct series and my favorite video game franchise. With its three different battle mechanics and its many, many recruitable characters, Suikoden became the start of an exceptionally unique series of RPGs. Number 77. Paper Mario A turn-based RPG based on the most popular video game character ever. Also a game developed by Intelligent Systems, the creators of Fire Emblem. Memorable and charismatic title and one of the very few role-playing games on the Nintendo 64. Number 76. I am Setsuna With an incredibly beautiful soundtrack and charming characters in a world full of snow comes I am Setsuna. This game took influence from many classic turn-based RPGs and crafted ideas of its own, becoming a great love letter to all of them. Number 75. Dark Souls from Software's masterpiece that changed modern game design and influenced many, many action RPGs. Dark Souls is a Western-style Japanese role-playing game that became extremely iconic and well-known for its unforgiving difficulty. Number 74. Eternal Sonata Another beautiful game, loosely based on the life of Frederick Chopin and lovable cast of characters in a fantasy world. Incredibly well-balanced battle system and highly unique, one of the best RPGs in both systems. Number 73. Skies of Arcadia Among the very few RPGs from the Dreamcast and also among the best, Skies of Arcadia is a classic game nowadays with a big cult following fanbase. It was also one of the very first JRPGs to popularize the Sky Pirate concept in them. Number 72. Golden Zone 1 and 2 These twin games are another case of one big RPG cut into two parts. It's also yet another love letter to classic RPGs even though it has become already one of them. Cool games, notorious for their charm and alongside the best in the Game Boy Advance. Number 71. Valkyria Chronicles Certainly one of the most unique strategy RPGs in existence with a heavy influence from the XCOM series. Valkyria Chronicles was a critical success thanks to its mature-oriented story, its engaging battle mechanics and its cell shaded graphics. Number 70. Final Fantasy VII the all-time classic on the PS1 that revolutionized the industry of JRPGs, the first title in the series being in full 3D, with a plot somewhat dark, dystopian, and with science fiction elements. Number 69. Devil Survivor Another spin-off from the Megami Tensei franchise, tactical RPG infamously known for being very hard. Great story with many different routes and endings where most of your decisions actually matter. 
3DS port is the complete version now with friendly difficulty settings. Number 68, Devil Survivor 2. The sequel, although not story related, also available in both systems, and also with the same characteristics, but this time with a story less dark and a more stereotyped cast of characters. And yeah, still with the same addictive gameplay mechanics. Number 67, The Sino Saga Trilogy. This is a whole game divided into three episodes, each is somewhat different than the other in terms of graphics and battle system, but the gameplay and story remain one and the same. Very influential, one of the best science fiction JRPGs of all time. Number 66, East 7. East 7 was the very first game in the series where you have other party members, also being playable characters. It was longer, more compelling and friendlier than its brutally hard predecessors. Great game with some interesting innovations. Number 65, Secret of Mana. Action RPG full of charisma in yet another beautiful fantasy world, one of the best JRPGs on the Super Nintendo and also a great 2 or even 3 player cooperative mode. Number 64, Ragnarok Tactics. An incredibly underrated strategy RPG on the PSP, Ragnarok Tactics is a spin-off of the popular MMORPG Ragnarok Online. A greatly balanced game with three different routes and main characters to choose from, fantastic story, stunning visuals and friendly entry for beginners in the genre. Number 63, Valkyrie Profile. Tri-Ace's masterpiece heavily based on the Norse mythology in a very dark and emotional journey. You take control of Leneth, a Valkyrie tasked with recruiting warriors for the Ragnar War. Excellent turn-based RPG with some platforming elements. Number 62, Tales of Berseria. The latest entry in the Tales of series, one of the absolute best in my opinion, very dark plot with a twisted heroine in a quest for revenge. A journey that takes you across fantastic landscapes into battle with combat mechanics, relying on combos and unique skills. Number 61, Kingdom Hearts 2. The best in the series and the one that gained critical acclaim all around the world. Kingdom Hearts 2 is a direct sequel of the first game, also on the PS2, and a very fun action RPG between the worlds of Disney and Final Fantasy. Number 60, Vandal Hearts. Vandal Hearts is a short strategy RPG but highly original, dark, mature story with a great cast of characters. Missions always have a different objective, turning the game into a very addictive adventure with variety in gameplay. Number 59, Suikoden 3. The third game in the series taking a different direction with an intricate and more strategic battle system. Only title with four main characters, each with their own story and route to follow. Quite good, often overlooked and obviously underrated. Number 58, Atelier Shelley. Out of all the modern Atelier games that changed after the Iris trilogy, I chose Shelley because it took all the gameplay elements to perfection. Battle system was combo-driven and fast-paced, story was told through two different heroines, and the annoying time mechanic was finally gone. Number 57, Near Automata. The sequel, almost unrelated to the first Nier, it's a role-playing game that combined many different genres, such as shoot 'em up and hack and slash. Excellent game, critically acclaimed and still with a very well-written and dark story. Number 56, Persona 3. The game that completely changed the Persona series, including a heavy focus on its high school simulation element. While still retaining a very obscure plot, Persona 3 opened up a light-hearted path, diverting players into a new style of gameplay. Number 55, Breath of Fire 3. The third title in Capcom's classic turn-based RPG series, Breath of Fire 3 found a new, more compelling way of storytelling, taking the battle mechanics to a better and imaginative level. A game notoriously known for its very unique soundtrack and character progression. Number 54, Fantasy Star 4. The conclusive episode of the Fantasy Star Tetralogy and the absolute best. Everything was improved to perfection, including its battle mechanics, soundtrack, storytelling, character development, and the overall navigation. Truly a masterpiece among Sega RPGs. Number 53, Dragon Quest 8. Square Enix and Level 5 developed this beautiful game, one of the best titles in the series and the one that truly popularized the franchise outside Japan. Story was panned in detail, making it bigger and with better character development. Once again, cell shaded graphics made the adventure visually stunning. Number 52, Lost Odyssey. 
After the creator of Final Fantasy left Square Enix, he founded Mythwalker to develop a new masterpiece called Lost Odyssey. A game extremely focused in storytelling, character development and a traditional but new turn-based battle system. Number 51. Fire Emblem The Sacred Stones The eighth game in the series but the second one ever to be localized. A great follow-up to Blazing Sword but with a completely new story and cast of characters. Two routes to choose from into an epic fantasy adventure filled with one of the best tactical RPG systems of all time. Number 50. Final Fantasy IX My personal favorite in the series and the last game written and produced by Sakaguchi himself. An overly charming story with a very versatile cast of characters, nostalgic soundtrack and beautiful graphics. Definitely another turn-based masterpiece. Number 49. Code Vein Following the huge success of the Soul series, Bandai Namco decided to create an anime version of it. Obviously with its own story, characters, party members and a very deep level of customization. Quite dark, compelling and engaging to play. Number 48. Parasite Eve One of the very first games that combined RPG with survival horror elements. A cinematic and short adventure on the PS1 focusing on a New York cop trying to find answers to the horrors taking place in the city. Great and innovative gameplay with one of the most unique battle systems ever created. Number 47. Super Mario RPG The legendary production of Squaresoft and Nintendo, a great turn-based RPG for everybody. Beloved by many, still praised and remembered for its 3D render graphics and its innovative battle mechanics. Number 46. East Memories of Celseta Following the success of E7, Falcom released Memories of Celseta, a junction of two games called E4. It became the canonical fourth game still with its fast-paced gameplay mechanics and an active party of three out of six playable characters. Number 45. Suikoden 2 The epitome of the series, the masterpiece Suikoden 2 early overlooked and nowadays a giant cult classic. Every element present in Suikoden 1 evolved into a more fluid and better nature, specifically its memorable story and its three engaging battle mechanics. Number 44. Tales of Zillia 1 and 2 Two games in the same vein, story and characters, with outstanding visuals and the best battle system in the series. Another great plot mixing fantasy with science fiction. An amazing duology that opened up more to all kinds of gamers, still with an excellent cooperative mode. Number 43. Persona 4 After the success of Persona 3, Atlas decided to continue with their new gameplay formula. Persona 4 was then born and it became a very popular turn-based RPG on the PS2. The port on the Vita threw the game into critical acclaim, to the point it almost became its own franchise with many different spin-offs. Number 42. Dragon Warrior 4 Take everything right the first three Dragon Warrior games did and mix them into a pot. The result will be a fourth title that contributed greatly to the history of RPGs. A more polished story and gameplay were overly present and of course a diverse plot following five different protagonists. Number 41. Star Ocean The Second Story Quite a big game with over 80 possible endings, very technical RPG totally immersive into its storytelling elements, two characters to choose from and a cast with incredible development. Its memorable action battle system is an evolution of the Tales of series, originally created by what later became Tri-Ace. Number 40. Eternal Poison A strategy RPG extremely overlooked with a beautiful gothic art style and a very well-written story. Three initial main characters to play as, each with their own allies and scenarios, with other two possible playable heroes to unlock. One of the best hidden gems ever made. Number 39. Final Fantasy VI One of the best titles in the series, famously known for its steampunk elements and its dark and tragic story-driven elements. 14 playable characters available, each with a unique personality. Truly a beautiful game, very historically important and quite influential. Number 38. Valkyra Chronicles 4 the most recent addition to Sega's fantastic strategy RPG series, it certainly wasn't exactly an innovation, but a way to please fans of the original masterpiece. In my opinion, it did everything right and it delivered quite smoothly another excellent mature story in a political war. Number 37. Xenogears 
The Legendary Xenogears, a science fiction RPG with one of the most controversial stories in video games and also, in my opinion, the best one ever written in one. Kind of outdated gameplay, but still with all its gorgeous sprites and battle innovations left intact. Number 36, Shadow Hearts 1 and 2. Another duology of games, one being a direct sequel to another, two fantastic and gothic RPGs are highly underrated. Mostly known for their judgment ring controlling the flow of battle and their great story set during the First World War. Number 35, Batten Kaitos. A very unique project on the GameCube within a beautiful world full of fantasy and lore, its battle mechanics driving turns that depend on card management and strategic thinking. One of the best stories ever written in a JRPG, full of plot twists and turning points of events. Number 34, Panzer Dragoon Saga. The Panzer Dragoon games are very good shooters on rails. The developers then decided to incorporate heavy RPG elements in a story-driven game. The result was Panzer Dragoon Saga, a highly unique role-playing title that faded into obscurity. Nowadays, it's one of the most expensive RPGs in the market. Number 33, Lunar the Silver Star. Lunar was one of the first turn-based JRPGs ever created that hold the term classic in their legacy. It was a simpler story for beginners into the genre, with a beautiful and charismatic cast of characters. Still praised for its full motion video features, its neat battle mechanics and its charming presentation. Number 32, Fire Emblem Three Houses. The newest Fire Emblem in the main series, an excellent game that combined the tactical prowess already known with a school simulator. Three different routes and heroes to follow, each with drastic consequences. This game broke the boundaries of subgenres and approached modern gamers the right way. Number 31, Wild Arms 5. The fifth and final title in the main Wild Arms series, still with Western elements but combined with science fiction. A new battle system carried over from the fourth game, improved and quite enthralling. Overall, the pinnacle of the franchise, also in terms of story and an enthusiastic cast of characters. Number 30, Tales of Vesperia. Another game recently remastered and probably the most balanced out of all the Tales of titles. Vesperia did everything right to approach all kinds of gamers into a compelling adventure, last but not least with a battle system fully in 3D easier to understand and get into. Number 29, Final Fantasy X. In my opinion, this was the last good Final Fantasy game alongside Final Fantasy XII. Needless to say, it is beloved by many and considered a favorite in the franchise for its emotional approach to story and character development. Number 28, Breath of Fire 4. The pinnacle of the series and the best out of the bunch, with great pixel art and beautiful lore. Its soundtrack and style are very reminiscent of the ancient Japanese culture, gratifying battle system alongside neat gameplay mechanics and a story told through two points of view to make this game a true cult classic. Number 27, Odin Sphere. One of the most beautiful action RPGs with its iconic 2D style and its five memorable protagonists. Also based on the Norse mythology with a plot overdriven by the upcoming Ragnarok, its remake is absolutely amazing as it brought more fans to its remarkable gameplay and gorgeous artwork. Number 26, The Last Story. Once again, Hironobu Sakaguchi and his new team brought truly a fantastic and romantic game called The Last Story, exclusive to the Wii. Underrated action RPG nowadays, with tons of missions and a variety of objectives to make the gameplay more alluring. Number 25, Pokémon Red and Blue. The very first Pokémon games ever made, the ones that started the madness of one of the best-selling video game franchises in the world. Remade for the Game Boy Advance, these twin titles changed the curse of monster collecting and trading during a role-playing adventure. Number 24, Final Fantasy Tactics. Influenced by the historically important Tactics Ogre and developed by some of the same people, Final Fantasy Tactics brought strategy RPGs to a bigger audience. Hard but engaging, it also balanced the challenge and offered an incredibly well-written story to never forget. Number 23, Valkyrie Profile 2. The follow-up masterpiece of the original on the PS1, a gruesome and tragic story full of great character development. Brutally hard, grindy and viciously addictive, this title is my favorite PS2 RPG ever. To date, it is still visually stunning and quite delightful to play. Number 22, Chrono Trigger. Another great piece of history and revolution from the RPG industry. The eventful game made by rivals Squaresoft and Chunsoft united for the first time. 
a favorite for millions with a magnificent soundtrack and a terrific story that charmed the world. Number 21, East 8, Lacrimosa of Dana. Known as Falcom's masterpiece, this critically acclaimed title finally gave the fame and popularity the series deserved. A very complete and fascinating action RPG with several gameplay mechanics involved, with a story told through the eyes of adult Christian and the gorgeous Dana. Number 20, Star Ocean Till the End of Time. Also known as Star Ocean 3, this third title experimented with the battle mechanics and the storytelling by venturing into the unknown. Hated at first, but loved afterwards, possibly a great conclusion to one of the best science fiction RPG series ever created. Number 19, Tactics Ogre Let Us Cling Together. One of the most influential strategy RPGs crafting a mature story early in the 16-bit era. Possibly among the hardest of its kind and a big icon of grid-based tactical games that later on gave birth to Final Fantasy Tactics. Number 18, Grandia 2. First a forgotten gem, then an underrated RPG, and finally a cult classic is Grandia 2, a game that surpassed its predecessor with a more complex story, better navigation and improved battle mechanics. Number 17, Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. The first Fire Emblem on a home console released outside Japan and quite a masterpiece. It took all elements from its predecessors to perfection by mixing its challenging mechanics with a remarkable story. Truly the best title in the series and a very welcoming addition to the franchise. Number 16, Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. The sequel to Path of Radiance now told through two different points of view, separated into various story arcs. In terms of gameplay, it's almost identical but with a few improved details here and there. Overall, this is what a video game sequel should always be like. Number 15, Grow Lancer Heritage of War. The fifth game in the Grow Lancer series that miraculously got localized, sadly leaving its sequel behind. Also the pinnacle of the franchise, highly regarded story filled with philosophical context and political drama. And also a very unique battle system being a combination of action and real-time strategy. Number 14, Final Fantasy VIII. Recently remastered on the Switch, Final Fantasy VIII focused more on a romantic plot with science fiction elements. It retained the classic turn-based battle system with new features and captivated players with its immersive world. Praise still goes to its very well-done cinematics. Number 13, Tales of Legendia. The criminally underrated Tales of Game completely undeserving of its hatred. I'm sorry, but my favorite title in this long-running series couldn't be left behind as it is an emotional journey with one of the greatest character development ever in a video game. Number 12, Disgaea 4. The best Disgaea in the series, as it was balanced, still very challenging, but with its doors open to a bigger audience. An extremely funny adventure full of comedy, charm, and a bunch of wacky characters that are really hard to forget. Number 11, Radiant Historia. Originally released on the Nintendo DS and later reimagined on the 3DS, both versions of this game are simply amazing. A fragile adventure into the depths of time by controlling the outcome of the story. Its turn-based battle system also imperative with originality, just like its unique gameplay mechanics. Number 10, Persona 5. One of the longest RPGs of all time and a fantastic game that brought back the popularity of the franchise. Persona 5 hypnotized its players with a slightly dark but mesmerizing story. Let's not forget about its outstanding addictive gameplay mechanics or its glamorous soundtrack. Number 9, Suikoden 5. The last main title in this brilliant franchise that we ever got. Suikoden 5 took its major influences from the first two games and did a perfect transition to the PS2. Great game with a long and deep story, assorted battle systems and a diversity of very useful and illustrious characters. Number 7, Jean d'Arc. The tragic tale of Jean of Arc comes back as a strategy RPG for the PSP. Some historical and fictional changes are there, as well as a new cast of characters. Our beloved heroine is accompanied by players into grid-based battles, magic, skills, and cool-looking transformations. Number 6, The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2. Here's one more duology of games that are one story and one incredibly well-written cast of characters. Tons of dialogue, intricate plot mixing political warfare and military school simulation. Let's not discuss its highly addictive battle system 
or we'll be talking about this pair forever. Number 5, Wild Arms 2. Another sequel that in my opinion surpassed the original. It simply had more gameplay, a deeper story, more characters and obviously improved mechanics. That were already great in the first game by the way. Wild Arms 2 is an underrated classic on the PlayStation. Number 4, Trials of Mana. Also known as Secret of Mana 2, as it plays very similar to its predecessor, a better game was Trials of Mana. A great adventure with six different playable characters, each with their own unique story, recently released on the Switch for the first time officially localized. Number 3, Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse. While the original was a great attempt at continuing with a mature and serious story, its quest-driven nature gave way to criticism. Along came a sequel with double approach to gameplay mechanics, with an outstanding soundtrack and a darker story centered in its apocalyptic euphoria. Number 2, Dragon Quest XI. The perfect Dragon Quest, the one that took all elements and delivered an enormous adventure. It satisfied all types of gamers by including a reasonable challenge, but also a post-game nightmare. Careful detail went into the story, the world and of course its very profound cast of characters. Number 1, Chrono Cross. My favorite RPG of all time, nostalgia trip to a melancholic story, a game that truly makes you care about the world and its characters best soundtrack ever made, and a beautifully looking cutscenes. I'm sorry, I know I said this list was going to be in random order, and it truly was, but with this masterpiece, I just couldn't resist putting it at number one. Alright guys, that's it. Now, I know there's a lot of JRPGs that should have been in this video and they weren't. Hell, I even left some of my personal favorites out of it. But you know what? Thank goodness for honorable mentions, right? So stay put, this video isn't over, on to these great honorable mentions, alright? Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!